Get ready to put your thinking caps on as today I'm going to give you a little bit more of a brain burner. We're going to cover the rules and gameplay of a game designed by Tom Lehman as we race for the galaxy. Race for the Galaxy is a game where each player competes to build the most valuable galactic empire. Each player acts like a galactic businessman where they get to go out, explore new worlds, new civilizations, and developments, and boldly add them to their strategy. They get points from the value that they have on the worlds, and their varying values on worlds varying values on developments. They also gain points as the worlds that they conquer or they settle produce goods that they can trade to other worlds or the same world. And they get those in the form of victory chips. At the end of the game, you add up the points on your cards, the value of your planets and developments, and add up your total victory chips, and whoever has the most points is the winner. Beginning your setup, you want to count out 12 victory chips for each player who's playing the game. If you play a game with two players, 24, three players, 36, four players, 48 victory chips. Then also count out a pile of 10 victory chips and set these aside. These get used in the last round of play. Sort out your action cards. You'll see that the face of these cards is different and comes in yellow, green, red, and blue. After you have these sorted, pull out the two player specific cards. These cards only get used for the two player advanced rules. Have each player select a color and just put it in front of them. Go through the rest of the cards and pull out your five start worlds. These are labeled 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and they have either a red or blue square in the upper left hand corner with the number, and in the lower right hand corner with the number. You're going to shuffle these start worlds and have each player select one of them. That card just gets flipped up face up in front of each player. If a player draws Alpha Centauri as their start world, they're going to take one card off the top of the deck and place it face down on Alpha Centauri. Just place it so you can still see the value of the card and also the bonus bar. If this is your first game and you're playing a two player game, just use Start Worlds 1 and 2. If it's a three player game, Start Worlds 1, 2, and 3, and then a four player 1, 2, 3, and 4. Deal out six cards to each player, then each player would examine those cards and discard two of them. They'll have four cards in their starting hand. If it's your very first game, might not be a bad idea to use the preset hands. These cards have these small numbered one, two, three, and four in the upper left hand corner and lower right hand corner. Match the starting cards up with the number on your start world. Race for the Galaxy takes place over a series of rounds. Within each round are several actions that the players get to perform for the most part simultaneously. The neat thing about the actions that take place in each, each round is they're going to vary turn by turn, and this depends on, at the beginning of the round, what each player selects from his or her action cards. The way this works is at the beginning of the round, each player is going to go through their action cards, which they'll have seven, and pick one. They take that card and lay it down face down in front, and then once all the players have made their selection, the players flip those action cards over, over simultaneously. Then you look at the action card, and in the upper left hand corner, you're going to see a Roman numeral. The action that takes place first is the lowest Roman numeral and then you go in ascending order. 
There are five possible actions that players can choose from at the beginning of each round. However, they have seven cards. Two of the cards are the same action, they just give a different bonus. The two actions that are doubled are Explore and Consume. After all the actions are complete for the round, players are then going to discard their hand down to 10 cards if they had more than 10 cards, and then they're going to begin the next round by selecting a new action. Rounds are going to continue in this fashion until the end of the round where in, during the round a player picks up the last victory chip or a player places their 12th world or development card out in, in front in their play area. Cards come in two basic types. There's the development card, which has a diamond in the upper left hand corner. The other type of card is the world card. You're going to notice all the worlds are going to have a circle in the upper left hand corner. Think of it this way, D diamond D development. The number inside the diamond is the cost. You're going to notice all the worlds are going to have a circle in the upper left hand corner. That one should be easy to remember too, because planets for the most part are round. The cost of the world is also in the circle. You're going to see a lot of different colors in those circles and different rings around the circles, and some of the circles have halos. When we get to the settle phase, we're going to explain that in more detail. On the left hand side of the card, of each card, you're going to notice what I like to call the bonus bar. This is a bar numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and in the fourth phase it also has a dollar sign. This signifies what bonus this card adds while it's in play to that current phase or to the current action. Anytime an action begins, you can always scan over your cards and look at that bonus bar to see if during that action, let's say the explore phase, number one, if during that action there's any bonuses awarded by any of your cards. The dark gray means it's a standard bonus, and the silver would mean that it's like a special bonus. And if it is silver, usually on the card you're going to see in the lower right hand corner or somewhere on that card, there's going to be an explanation of that special bonus. It's going to explain it in more detail. If you have a card that produces something, in the upper right hand corner, there's always a reminder of what that card produces. When an action takes place during a round, all players get to perform that action. Only the player who selected the action card gets the bonus from the action card. If one or more players selects the same action card, that action doesn't take place twice. It only takes place once, but both of the players who selected the action card would now get the bonus. Picture yourself going through space, seeking out new life and new civilizations. Well, rather than going into space when you explore in this game, you get to go into the deck. When the explore phase starts, or the explore action starts, every player gets to draw two cards, and they get to look at them and then select one of them. So it's like going through space and seeing what you find and deciding which way you want to go. That card gets added to your hand. Now I told you that there's two action cards for Explore, and each of them would give a different bonus. So 
Let's cover the bonuses for the players who played the Explore card. The icon on the top of the card shows how the card works. It shows that each player would draw two cards and keep one. This is the bonus that gives you additional draw of five. You're gonna, it shows you the eye, which means you get to explore five additional cards plus the two normal cards. So you draw seven cards and get to keep one. It works great when you're trying to search for just the right card to add to your hand. The other explore bonus lets you draw one additional card. So you get to draw the standard two, plus one additional card, but instead of just keeping one card, you get to keep two cards. The other thing that you wanna do anytime you play a phase, and I'll keep reminding you, is look over the worlds and development cards that you already have in play and see if any of them have any bonus for the number one phase, which is Explore. Developments can be things like machine, robots, or technology that would help speed up production and give you bonuses or help other planets produce more. During the development phase, each player may play one development card. It's optional if they do or don't. Um, what you're gonna notice on the development card is that in the upper left-hand corner, like we showed before, is the cost of that development card. It's in the diamond. The way you pay this cost for a development card is by discarding cards. What players do is they select the development card they wanna play, they put it face down, and once all players have made that selection, they flip them over simultaneously. They'd play it in the card group in front of them, and then they'd pay the cost. If you're the player who played the development card at the beginning of the round, you get minus one to the cost of the development. Also remember to look over all the cards that you have out in front of you, and see if there's any with number two on that card giving any bonuses. Now it's time to make friends with planets, invade planets with your military might, and finally settle some of those fine worlds that you hold in your hand. This is the settle phase. During the settle phase, each player gets to play one settlement card, real similar to how the development phase works. Players select the world that they wanna play, they put it face down, and then all the players reveal those cards simultaneously. After the players reveal the cards and put them face up in front of them, then they need to pay the cost for the world. I'm gonna explain paying the cost for these worlds by breaking them down into two types, peaceful worlds and hostile worlds. Peaceful worlds are the cards that have a black ring around the circle. They may have a color around it, like a halo, or they may have color inside the circle, but as long as that black ring circles the number, that means it's a peaceful world. Hostile worlds, on the other hand, are worlds that have a red ring around the circle. Peaceful worlds, you pay for just like you paid for development cards. You pay for them by discarding cards from your hand or applying bonuses from other cards. Always remember to check the bonus bar, look for number three on the settle phase, and see if you have any bonuses that would apply to that phase. Hostile worlds, on the other hand, you can't simply pay for by discarding other cards. 
You have to have military power in order to play those. The only way you can get military power is by getting it from your cards. Again, look at your bonus bar, look at the step number three on the left hand side of your bonus bar and see if you have any symbols like this. Some of those symbols may be negative points. If it's negative, that means it costs you one more to pay for that military world. Another type of world that really doesn't affect the cost of settling right now is a production world. I just want to point these out now, and these are the worlds with the different colors in the circle or around the circle. The colors are blue, brown, green, and yellow. We'll discuss those more during the produce phase. The production worlds with the halo of the color, either blue, brown, green, or yellow, around the number, around the circle, that means it's a windfall world. The only thing to know right now about a windfall world is when you play that world, you pay it, put it face up, pay the cost of that world, and then you put a card. You don't look really, doesn't matter what's on the other side of this card. You put that card face down on the world. You always want to make sure to expose the bonus bar, and then you want to be able to see the top of the card as well when that card is face down. I'm going to skip the number four consume phase and jump right into the number five produce phase. I think it'll, it's going to make the consume phase make a little bit more sense when we start to talk about it. This is a phase where your worlds and developments are going to start working for you. You're going to put the people to work or the machines to work and start producing goods. This is also a phase where we start looking at the cards in the deck a little differently. Rather than by examining what's on the card, we're just going to use the card as a representation for a good. When you have a world produce, you look at step number five in the bonus bar. And if there's a little production symbol, that means during the produce phase, each player gets to produce. You take, when you produce in a world, you take a card from the draw pile and place it face down in that world, still leaving enough room on the card so you can see the bonus bar and you can see the cost of the world and the title of the card as well. At the beginning of the round, the player who chose the action card for produce gets a bonus, where if they have a windfall world, and these are the worlds with a halo around the circle, if they have a windfall world that does not already have a good on it, they can replenish one windfall world by taking a card from the draw pile and placing it face down on their windfall world. We talked about production worlds just a little bit during the settle phase. What this production world is about is you're going to see in the circle, inside that circle we talked about the colors, blue, brown, green, and yellow. Those are listed in order of scarcity or value in the game. Blue equals novelty goods, brown is rare goods, green are genes goods, and then yellow is alien technology. You don't necessarily have to remember the names of each color. Just remember that if, a, let's say you have a production on a world, I have lost alien battle fleet here. This is an alien technology world. During the produce phase, I'm gonna draw a card from the deck, pay, place it face down on this world, and now this good that's on this world is an alien technology. The reason you wanna pay attention to that is because during the consume phase, you're gonna to need to match certain technologies with certain consumers. And you wanna make sure your cards are cohesive and in order to have the best strategy, have your cards be cohesive where you produce the right kind of goods on worlds and you consume those same kind of goods on other worlds. Next we move on to the consume phase, and I think it's going to make a lot more sense now that we talked about the produce phase. Ultimately what makes your worlds and developments happy is when they can consume. The consume phase is mandatory for all players. This means that if you have a consume power in your bonus bar under number 4 that you can use, meaning that you have a good that meets the icon or meets the requirement for that, you must use it. If I have, let's say, a brown good here, which is a rare good, 
and I have a power that can consume this good and turn it into victory points, that means I must use that. The powers on your bonus bar for consumption, or the consume phase, can be things like trade a card or a production card of brown, blue, green, and yellow for victory points, or trade in one of those cards to draw other cards, or any combination there above. Let's take a look at some of the different icons. If there's two consume powers, let's say they consume a rare brown good, and I only have one good, I can choose which of the two consumes that rare good. Typically I'm going to choose the one that gives you the most victory points, or that draws the most cards. Consume is one of the action cards that you draw at the beginning of the round where we actually have two action cards for consume. They each give you a different bonus. There's one that gives you double victory points. The other consume card gives you the trade bonus. The trade bonus works a little different because before you consume anything, you must trade one card for the values listed on this card. Watch in your bonus bar because there's a special bonus for trading. You'll notice that by the dollar sign in the left bonus bar. This trade bonus can be things like letting you draw an additional card when you trade a card.
Race for the Galaxy typically takes a few plays before the strategy part of it really sinks in. You might want to go for a strategy where you're the first player to play 12 worlds and you're just playing really cheap worlds to get them all out there before any players can really build their great strategy. Or you could be one of the guys who wants to have this intricate inner workings where they have worlds that all work really well together and they choose double victory points. I've got beaten both scenarios. Thanks for watching. You can check out our other videos on our YouTube channel and at moderntablegamer.com. And remember to play games once a week, otherwise the planets will not align and we won't achieve world peace. So I'll do mine face up. I'm going to show you, typically everyone would choose if they want to s settle it or gain a development. Remember those are the cards with the diamond on them. But I'm going to do this one. It's optional. You guys can do it too. But I get a bonus of minus one from the cost. The way you settle a development or, or take over or build a development is you take this and you have to decide from your hand on discarding cards to pay for it. If this was a one and I didn't have a bonus, I would just discard one card and now I could play this out here. If this was like a three, I'd have to discard three cards from my hand and play it. So that's, it's real simple how you play these, but you gotta make decisions about like what cards did I get rid of, you know, from my hand. It kind of makes it a little more intense. Every card's got this bonus bar on the side. And you notice how it's Roman numerals, just like our phases are Roman numerals. That means during this action, like develop, if you look at your cards, you don't have anything next to two. This is the bonus that your cards out there give you for each action that you do. Like if we did a settle phase number three, you get some bonuses to your military power and you get bonus of a cost reduction to play a rare element world. Okay, loot. Got it. Luke just flipped his face up and this goes back in there. All right, flip them over. Wow, so everyone's to settle. And your bonus, if you guys settle a world, your bonus means whether it's a military world or peaceful world, if you settle a world, you get to draw on another card, which is cool. So I got explore first. So that means everyone's gonna explore. I get to draw three cards and keep two. Everyone else gets to draw two cards and keep one, except you have the bonus. And now it's a good time to tell you about, the, there's two rings. There's a black ring around the world, and then there's a red ring. If it's got a black ring around it, that's a peaceful world. And all you have to do, just like on developments, is you discard a card to play it. Like this one, it's worth one. I would just discard a card and I get to play Empath World. If you have a red ring, that means it's hostile. In order to play a hostile world, you have to look at your number threes here, here, and here, or here and here on your worlds that are out there in developments. And if you have a plus one to your red, that means you have military strength. In order to play a military world, like if I wanted to play this one, I'd have to have plus two, which I do from New Sparta. I'll play this. And he's got space marines out, give him a plus two so he can settle alien uplift rays. And Zach, you have, if you wanted to play a military world, you have this one, play, gives you a, ge a generic one military. This one's a little more refined. The world would have to have like a brown, it'd have to be a red ring with brown inside of it. Okay, so settle's done. Now we go to produce. And if you look at number five on all your cards, do you have any that produce? I do, I get one down here, you produce here. So if you, since you played production, you take one card and put it face down on Rebel Miners. Oh yeah, this is a windfall world. Yep, yep, it automatically produces. 